the dropship's landing gear sank into the rust-colored soil, kicking up a cloud of dust that lingered like a phantom over the barren field. The planet, designated only as RX-87, looked as unforgiving as its name, a rocky wasteland under an ash-gray sky. It was too quiet here, no wind, no movement, just silence. And the distant silhouette of Colony Epsilon, standing like a tombstone against the horizon. Sergeant Marcus Hill surveyed the terrain through the scratched visor of his helmet. This was his fourth deployment in as many years, and yet the quiet here was different. It felt like the air was holding its breath. All right, boys, we're here, Hill announced over the comms. The squad was strapped in around him, six men, all hand-picked for this mission. Corporal Reiner was checking his rifle for the thousandth time, a habit of nervous energy. Beside him, Private Kessler was fidgeting, the youngest of the bunch, his first taste of real deployment beyond the simulations back at the base. Staff Sergeant Ortega sat across from them, face hardened and expression unreadable, like a stone idol on combat gear. Strange, Lieutenant Dwyer muttered beside Hale, peering at the colony through a scope. No movement at all. You'd think they'd send someone to meet us, right? Hale grunted. That was the first thing that had struck him, too. Colony Epsilon had gone dark two weeks ago, and all subsequent hails had bounced back unanswered. The brass back home wanted answers, but Hale couldn't shake the feeling that they wouldn't like what they found. Never let them see the flesh again. With tentacles of light, with double teeth hoping to lick at the lustless dye. The landing ramp lowered with a mechanical groan, and Hale motioned for his men to disembark. The eerie stillness amplified the crunch of their boots on the compact soil. The colony gate loomed before them, a steel barricade against a hostile environment. Hale's gaze traced the walls, pocked and stained, but intact. No signs of a breach. Ortega, get us in, he ordered. Ortega approached the gate control panel, fingers deftly tapping on the keypad. A heavy clank sounded as the gate opened, the metal screeching like a wounded animal. Beyond it, the streets of Colony Epsilon were deserted, but not desolate. The lights were still on, soft yellow glows filtering out from the squat, prefabricated buildings that lined the path. W where is everyone? Reiner asked, voice barely whisper over the squad channel. Stay sharp, Hale said. Something's not right. They advanced slowly, weapons up, eyes scanning every doorway and window. As they reached the center of the colony, they spotted them, the colonists. They stood in small groups, clustered around the courtyard, unmoving, their backs to the soldiers. Uh, sir? Kesso's voice trembled. They're just standing there. Let's make contact, Dwyer said. Keep it cool, everyone. Hale approached cautiously, gesturing to a nearby colonist, a middle-aged man with a weathered face, his clothes dusty but otherwise clean. Hey, you there. We're here to help. What happened? The man turned, and Hale's stomach twisted. The colonist's eyes were vacant, pupils dilated, and his lips parted in a weak, unnatural smile. Welcome, soldiers. We're glad you're here. His voice was monotonous, as if the words were rehearsed, devoid of any real emotion. Hale glanced back at his men, who were all exchanging uneasy looks. Where's the overseer? Who's in charge? He pressed. The colonist's head twitched slightly, his smile widening. No need for that. We are all in harmony now. You will understand soon. Before Hale could react, there was movement from the shadows, other colonists emerging, forming a loose ring around the soldiers. They were smiling, too. Eyes empty, bodies moving with the stiffness that set Hale's instincts screaming. Back to the gate! Now! Hale barked, but it was too late. The colonists surged forward, hands grasping, eyes staring blankly. Renner fired a warning shot into the air, but they didn't even flinch. One colonist grabbed Kessler's arm, and Hale saw a sp something small and dark skittering across the colonist's sleeve. Get it off him, Hale shouted, rushing to pull Kessler free, but the young soldier's face had already gone slack, his eyes glazing over. He turned, mouth moving silently, 
as if struggling to form words. Sarge! <laughs> Kessler's voice broke, his body convulsing. He fell to his knees, hands clawing at his helmet. Hale stepped back, his heart pounding. He had seen enough. Fall back. We're leaving. The soldiers retreated, but the colonists advanced, their movements no longer sluggish, but quick, coordinated. Hale fired, the sharp crack of his rifle echoing through the empty colony. Dwyer grabbed Kessler, pulling him to his feet. But the young soldier turned on him, eyes wild, and pushed the lieutenant away with a strength that seemed impossible. What the hell is happening? Reiner yelled, his voice cracking with panic. They reached the gate, Ortega slamming the panel to close it, the heavy doors grinding shut just as the colonists reached them, their hands slamming against the metal. Inside the relative safety of the gate, the soldiers paused, breathing heavily. Hale looked at Kessler, who was now eerily calm, standing still, his eyes unfocused. It's in him, Dwyer said. <laughs> the damn thing's inside him. Hale knew it too. <laughs> the parasites, whatever they were, had gotten to Kessler. He looked at the rest of his team. The fear in their eyes reflected his own. We're not leaving anyone behind, he said, more to convince himself than anyone else. We're going to figure this out. Figure it out? Ortega snapped. Sarge, he's compromised. We're all compromised. We need to call for evac. Get the hell out of here. And bring this back with us? Hale shot back. You saw what it did. If these things can jump hosts, he trailed off, the implication settling over them like a shroud. Silence fell, broken only by the rhythmic pounding on the gate. Hale looked at Kessler, who stared back, his expression blank, but there was something, a flicker of fear, buried deep in his eyes. I'm still here, Kessler whispered, his voice barely audible. Sarge, don't leave me. Hale's jaw tightened. He turned to Dwyer. Lock him down. Restrain him if you have to, but we're not leaving him behind. Dwyer nodded, though his hands shook as he reached for the restraints. The pounding on the gate grew louder, more insistent. Hale knew they didn't have much time. They needed to find out what they were dealing with, and fast. Partake a Reiner with me, Hale ordered. We're heading to the command center. Maybe we can find some answers there. He glanced at Kessler, then back to Dwyer. Keep him safe, and keep your comms open. The three soldiers moved out, leaving Dwyer and Kessler behind. As they made their way through the deserted streets, Hale couldn't shake the feeling that they were being watched. The colony, once a beacon of hope on this distant world, now felt like a labyrinth of shadows and hidden threats. Every corner they turned, every doorway they passed, seemed to hold the promise of something waiting, something hungry. They reached the command center, the door sliding open with a soft hiss. Inside, the lights flickered, casting long, waving shadows across the room. Hale approached the main console, Ortega already working on bringing up the colony's logs. Looks like uh, they were aware of something, Ortega said, his eyes scanning the data. Reports of strange behavior, people acting erratic. Then, nothing. The logs just stop. They didn't even send out a distress call, Reiner said, his voice hushed. Why wouldn't they call for help? Hale had a sinking feeling he knew why. He looked at the screen, the last entry, a simple line of text, almost like a warning. We are one. We are free. They're not just... Infected, Hale said slowly. They're connected. Controlled. Ortega looked at him, eyes wide. Like a hive mind? Hale nodded, and if they're all connected, then they know we're here. They know everything we've done. A crackle of static came over the comms, followed by Dwyer's voice, panicked. Sarge, they're coming over the walls. I can't hold them off. Hale's heart pounded. Hold your position, Dwyer. We're on our way. Ortega pulled up the colony schematic. There's a maintenance tunnel. It'll get us back faster, bypass the main courtyard. Let's move, Hale said, not wasting another second. 
They sprinted through the dim corridors, the sound of their boots echoing off the metal walls. Hale's mind raced. They were running out of time, and the longer they stayed, the more likely it was that they'd end up just like the colonists. Puppets, their strings pulled by something they couldn't see or fight. They reached the maintenance tunnel, the narrow passageway barely wide enough for them to move single file. The air inside was stifling, the walls closing in around them. Hale led the way, his rifle at the ready, every muscle in his body tensed for what lay ahead. The tunnel opened up near the gate, and they emerged just in time to see the colonists swarming over the barricade, their bodies moving with a fluid, unnatural grace. Dwyer was on the ground, struggling against two colonists who were trying to pin him down. Kessler stood nearby, his expression vacant, his hands at his sides. Dwyer! Hale shouted, raising his rifle. He fired, the shots striking the colonist, but they didn't stop. They moved with a single-minded determination, their eyes locked on Dwyer. Ortega rushed forward, slamming the butt of his rifle into one of the colonists, knocking them off Dwyer. Reiner grabbed Kessler, pulling him away from the fray, but the young soldier resisted, his movements jerky and uncoordinated. <laughs> He's fighting it, Rainier said, his voice strained. But I don't know how long he can hold on. Hale knew they couldn't stay. They needed to get out, get back to the dropship, and hope that they could contain whatever this was. But as he looked at Kessler, saw the fear in his eyes, he knew it wasn't that simple. They couldn't just run. They had to end this, here and now. Ortega, get Dwyer on his feet, Hale ordered. Reiner, help me with Kessler. We're heading to the reactor. The reactor? Ortega's eyes widened. You're not serious. It's the only way, Hale said. If we can't stop them, we'll make sure they don't leave this place. They moved as one, the weight of what they were about to do settling over them like a dark cloud. The colonists were relentless, their bodies moving with a purpose that chilled Hale to the bone. They reached the reactor. The room bathed in the cold, blue light. Hale approached the control panel his hand steady as he began the sequence. Arch! Kessler's voice was weak, but it cut through the noise. Don't let them win, please. Hale looked at the young soldier, his heart heavy. I won't, he promised. He pressed the final button, the reactor's hum growing louder, the countdown beginning. We need to move, Ortega urged, pulling Dwyer towards the exit. Hale nodded, but his eyes lingered on Kessler. The young soldier smiled, just the flicker of the boy he had been, before the parasite had taken him. Go, Kessler whispered. Finish it. Hale turned, leading his men out of the reactor room, the countdown echoing in his ears. They ran, the ground shaking beneath them as the reactor began to overload. The colonists were still coming, their faces blank, their bodies moving with that same unsettling coordination. They reached the dropship. Ortega slamming the door shut as they lifted off, the colony shrinking beneath them. Hale watched as the reactor went critical, a bright light engulfing the settlement, the shock wave rippling outwards, consuming everything in its path. Silence fell on the drop ship, the men staring at the screens, watching as Colony Epsilon disappeared in a flash of light. Hale closed his eyes, the weight of what they had done settling over him. They had stopped it, for now. But he knew, deep down, that this wasn't the end. The parasites were still out there, waiting, watching, and they would be ready. We did what we had to, Dwyer said, his voice barely above a whisper. Hale nodded, his eyes still closed. Yeah, but it's not over, not by a long shot.